something you may want to do after all this. Now, I know some people believe in stretching, some don't. I'm just going to show you a few things that may work if you have tight calves that you may want to try. Um, one thing I'll say about stretching, you probably don't want to hold things longer than about 15 to 30 seconds as far as the stretches go. Like if you're getting into a minute or two minute hold, I, I kind of caution against that. But if you got really tight calves, you know, give yourself, you know, set yourself up with about, I don't know, three sets of 10 repetitions, maybe, you know, some people hold stretches from between two and a half seconds or a second and a half even to about 30 seconds. Um, I think if, if you want to do that, that's fine. I'm just going to kind of show you the technique you may want to use. So the, the first one I'm going to show you is kind of hitting the deep calf muscles or those muscles that we were smooshing first along with the toe, the toe flexors, which also may get pretty tight here, right? So having a wedge is great for this, but the first thing is when you go after the, the calves is you kind of get into a kneeling lunge position. Now, what you want to do is make sure that your heel stays down and your foot stays down, particularly the ball of your foot. So, if you, now I have a pole in my hand, and this is, can be used for balance and it also can be used for stretch. So one thing you can do is keep the heel down, and then you're just going to lean forward and stretch. Now you want to keep the heel down when you do this, so if the heel starts to come off, then you're kind of cheating yourself. So let the heel stay down. Imagine reaching down through your heel and then just lean forward, but there's a little bit more to it than that. You see, your calves not only point your toes, but they also do what's called supinate and pronate, right, at the subtalar joint and the mid-metatarsal. So one thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you, do, it, it, you don't lose your big toe. So if you find yourself stretching and then you see the inside of your foot peeling off, and probably if I show it on my other leg, it'd be a little easier. If you see like when you're stretching and then you see the inside of the foot peeling off, that's not really what you want. You want to keep that inside of the foot down. So what you do is you go ahead and put a stick, and this could be like a baseball bat or whatever you have, on the outside of the foot, right about the pinky toe. And then you just kind of lean forward and aim your knee to the outside of that stick. Now when you do that, you want to make sure that you keep the inside of your foot down, okay, as you lean forward. And then that's going to give you a nice stretch to the calf. So not only are you addressing it as a uh, plantar flexor, right, you're able to, your dorsiflexing here, which is the opposite to get the calf stretch, but you're also pushing the foot into what's called a pronated position. And that, that's stretching it and keeping it from doing its other job, which is sup or those muscles' other job, which is supination. So just use this stick to aim for with the knee, aim the knee for the, to the outside of the stick, and then hold on to the inside of the foot, and then just lean forward, stretch, try to keep the heel down as best you can. Okay, exhale, and then inhale, relax, exhale, stretch. Now, if you want to take it a, a step further, what you do is you get one of these wedges out and you put your toes on it. This is going to cause your toes to start to extend a little bit. And if they're tight, remember we did those toe joint mobilizations. If, if they're tight, this is going to feel like an, a little bit extra. So you, you do the same setup here, except you have the toes extended at the same time. And you try to relax and keep the ball of the foot down. Let those toes gently extend as you push through your heel and stretch. Okay, you don't want to, and like I said, avoid rolling to the inside or outside of the foot. Um, that hits the deeper muscles of the calves and uh, can really feel nice and a, a great thing to do um, before you, uh, even after you warm up. Let's say you've rolled out a bit and then you want to go and do like a little, some warm, a warm up jog and a few sprints before you enter into your main set. Uh, that's great. Uh, you come back and you can stretch afterwards. So, um, so that's one. Now, if you want to hit the more superficial muscles, the, long, the two joint muscles, it's essentially the same kind of setup, except you would do it with straight legs. So, the way it would work, if you can kind of imagine that wall being right here, is you would just kind of keep your heels on the ground, and you can use this wedge in the same way, you could put, except you could put your whole foot on it here. So imagine this is on, the is on the ground here, and there's a wall in front of me. I would just kind of put my foot against the wedge, and then I would just lean forward against the wall to stretch out that gastrocnemius in the backside of the body. 
So those are two really good stretches, or a couple really good stretches that you could add to it if you like to stretch. If you don't like to stretch and just like to roll out, that's fine too. I think it's a bit of personal preference with it. I, like, I tend to have tighter calves, uh, so it feels good to me and I continue to do it and find some success with it. Uh, but it, like I said, it's by no means necessary.